What's going on? Move the Mouse here back in City Skylines with another episode of the How To Series. Another thing that you've unlocked at this point is an oil power plant. And uh, this pollutes just like coal does, but it provides more power. So coal power plant provides 40 megawatts at cost of $19,000, 560 per week upkeep, 50 and 50 on pollution and noise pollution. If we look at the oil power plant, it produces 120. So three times what the coal power plant is producing. So it is a lot more expensive to upkeep per week. There's a little less pollution, but just as much noise pollution. So where this was 50 and 50, this is 35 on the pollution. So it's a little bit better for your city. Not great, but it does require, just like the coal power plants, the ability to get that resource over here into wherever your power plant is. My power plants are right here. So they're going to need coal to burn or oil to burn. And if they don't have good enough access to the highway, at some point they might stop producing power temporarily uh, until traffic is cleared and trucks can get in and, and provide deliveries. So they're constantly trying to keep their resources filled. But if you have really bad traffic, which can happen really easy in industry areas, if you don't manage it just right, um, you can kind of cut off your, uh, your power plants flow. Um, you'll notice that we're having a little bit of a worker problem over here. It's not too big of a deal, um, but there's, there's just not enough workers and we have a ton of residential demand right now. I would hope, yeah, I was going to say, I would hope that our unemployment's pretty low. It's at what, down to 2% now. It was at three just a second ago, but essentially this problem will sort itself out once we move some more people in. So, um, maybe what we could do is this same approach. And we'll just we'll we'll bring it up one more time so that there's a little bit closer to where they'd be working so we'll come over here 11 units and this will dead end just like the other street and we'll come over 11 again and this one we will intersect after auto save hangs all right now over here we've broken a bit of zoning but we can fix that once people start to move in let's just fill this entire block in we've got some money in the bank we've got to meet a couple more city services over here what do we do we went to that one power it shouldn't be an issue for too long even if people move in where there isn't power spread it should go pretty fast you can see those bubbles are pretty forgiving at where they'll spread power to. So pretty much as everybody moves in, we should be good there. Real quick to get people moving around these neighborhoods a little better. We can get them connected like this. And then maybe do something like that. Make sure, be careful, it doesn't break one of your other sidewalk connections. Because it might, you know... Doing something like that, it might snap the sidewalk I just built to this and not to the street. Um, so be be careful when you're doing that. It could it could throw it off, and then you'll get pedestrians walking way around or not using the pedestrian paths at all because it's too far. Um, so just keep in mind that is a really long block. Let's break this and right where was it here? Come all the way to the end of the street. That should break all the zoning in the process now. Uh, these are insanely, insanely long blocks. So let's give people at least two, if not three, cut throughs on here. We'll do that. And how about one right here? Now, what we can do is break the road from, from these two points to create crosswalks at those two points. So I'll just show you this one more time. We built a really narrow crosswalk over there by the school. If we pause this for a moment, let's see. We'll bring the regular road as close as we can to that right there. We'll stay on the outside of it if we can. There we go, perfect. Now if we do grass lined or let's do tree line since we haven't seen that yet. So that has a really nice look and it creates these crosswalks almost, you know, right where we need them. I'll do one more, one more block of uh, footpaths 
just because we want these people moving around, not getting in cars. We'll see how far they're willing to walk. We might even connect the pedestrian path up to here. Um, but that's a bit of a stretch right now. So let's do that. Ooh, I'm surprised it let us. It let us just, just sneak in there. Just because those people are going to be really cut off, I'm going to do that same thing with the streets here. So I think I had to break two on either side. At least if I want to keep things kind of symmetrical and lined up. Go to the outside. There. And we'll do tree line again. Oh, I broke all that zoning, didn't I? Uh, did I replace all that zoning before? That I messed up that I said I wouldn't forget? Uh, I definitely didn't mean to do that. So X button on Xbox, square on PlayStation. You don't have to switch to the D zone tool. You can just use that to D zone uh, instead. What's the water problem? Oh, is it av it's availability? It is not. Uh, is it budget? It is. So we'll go up to 100 percent. You can come in here and micromanage 50, 75, 100. That's all I'm going to do here at most. And we're getting to the point where we're going to stop bothering. We're going to be adding them in so fast. It's not worth the, uh, the micromanagement. Electricity wise, we're going to need something very soon. And we've got money in the bank, so we may as well prepare for it. I'm going to drop in another coal power plant. You can certainly drop in oil at this point if you have uh, just the base game mechanics. I am going to use what I think is a Green Cities stepping stone. Uh, this power plant is great for getting you to the, the later game. So once we can unlock that 7500, that's going to be my power plant of choice. It's the same basic principle. It just doesn't pollute, right? It's a bigger version of the power plant. What you're choosing is upkeep cost per week or you know, how much it costs overall. But uh, if I had made these blocks a little bit larger, I think 12 units across on the uh, the, the two lane streets, it would have been large enough to, to put uh, more power plants down back to back. But we can do that for now. That'll get us into the green a little, whoops, wrong one, info views into the green a little bit. So we should be good there for a little while. Next milestone again is at 7,500 and that's where we unlock a lot of the high density stuff. So before we get there, we want to talk about everything we need to prepare for it. And one of those things definitely is uh, transport. Now, in this case, I did drop in uh, a bus depot in the city and I put a bus line in and I can't for the life of me figure out where I put that in the series or if I did it all. So just in case I didn't real quick recap, you drop in a building like a bus depot somewhere on the map. Buses spawn from there. They don't actually have to be connected as part of a line, just put it on the roads that connect to the roads you want to put a bus route on. And then you can paint a line with a bus route, putting stops kind of wherever you want. Now, uh, you can choose when you're creating them to pick a side of the road that that's snapping to. So make sure you do the side that you want. Otherwise, you'll create some real funky routes where if this stop was you know, on this side, the bus might go down to this dead end and turn around and come back up this way. You don't want that. You don't want buses creating more traffic. So let's come up with another bus route that's going to service this area. And for this first stop, I'm going to put it beyond this intersection so that we can kind of turn in and around this area. But let's say we want people to stop right there. That's the, the first stop. And it creates this little cutout. And you can actually see it removes the parking lane so that the bus can pull over and try and get out of the way of the traffic. Now, we can put these wherever. This is where I was talking about, you know, if I have it on this side, it's going to drive down the street. But if I have it on the other side, well, it, it can't, you know, just cut over the median. So it has to go all the way down, turn around and come back. So let's do, uh, let's cover kind of this, this part over here. So I'm going to put one, you know, not too, too often, but, you know, not so far apart that it's not beneficial. Maybe we can go like kind of on every quadrant sort of here, just to get people kind of moving around the area. And here we'll do kind of at this middle street. It's not an exact science and I'm not necessarily the best at it, but hopefully this will give you an idea. We'll get some buses moving people around the residential area, getting them out to places like the larger commercial strips. 
the other thing we can do later on is we'll combine this so that you know we've got some buses running through residential picking people up bringing them to the busier roads and then having those stops right near um metro stations and there's even some some hubs buildings that we can do uh, as part of uh, sunset harbor which allow for all kinds of different combinations of uh, metro and air and helicopter to kind of merge everything into different buildings and, and keep it nice and effective and efficient but even without that you know we can just put a bus stop next to a metro stop and it basically achieves the same thing those are the basics of the bus routes if you've got i want to say snowfall that added uh, trams and trolley buses are part of Sunset Harbor. So they're all very similar in how they work, um, except trams and trolley buses are just a tiny little bit different because they are actually connected to a wire or they're running on a rail. And the depot needs to be connected to roads or a path that has that, that rail system or that overhead wire for the trolley buses. So you'd set them up virtually identical, but effectively you need a route. <laughs> You need a route of you know roads with rails they're they're different so if we look over here uh two-lane road with tram tracks right so i could run a tram line over here but if this actual rail isn't connected to wherever my depot is which for my bus is you know way up here in industry then they're they're never going to spawn they're never going to get here um so the depots are really important that they're connected in the same way for tram and trolley bus. Principles are otherwise the same, um, and those are all kind of lower servicing uh, forms of transport. So I think they hold between like 20 and 30 people. I should probably, should probably double check that. And one way to find out is to inspect on a bus. It is 30, 30 people, and there's zero passengers on it right now, so. The, uh, one of the reasons for that is there's not a lot of reason for people to come down here because what, what problem is that solving, right? It's not really taking them to a lot of different places. Um, we do have a little bit of commercial demand and I want to do something different over here. So as this starts to fill out, let's see what we did district wise. I don't think I, I might not have painted a district yet. Let's do a, a district over here kind of on this road like so and we've just recently unlocked a uh, new specialization for commercial and we had talked about it before did anything actually move in it did and power spread and i didn't even notice um up here we had set up a district to define the forestry specialization for industry so you can have regular industry which is polluting factories but if we stamp down forestry it tells it hey use forestry instead um you can force things like farming or, or oil businesses, um, all with various levels of noise and pollution, water resource. Push the right stick in if you want to find out a little bit more about each one of those. Um, so it'll actually pop up a little tooltip to tell you. And some of them increase ground pollution, increase water usage in the form of farming, um, right? Doesn't that, yeah, considerably increased water consumption. So that's the, the drawback to something like a farming. But uh, we've when we finally had some demand and there wasn't any other place to go they finally started deciding to move in some uh some logging business and you can see that comes all the way down through here and underneath this overpass we'll get it connected to the actual highway at some point where they won't have to cut through there but it's working for now but now as we've got all that um residential demand with that little bit of commercial we've got i want to do another one of those specializations so over here we can do a tourism specialization so if we paint a district and stamp this policy down on it. The commercial businesses in this sector will be focused on tourism. And essentially, the thing to think, the thing to caution about here is that it does cause more noise pollution than even a traditional commercial zone, which is already noisy. It does attract tourists, which again, bring even more people into your city, causes more traffic, but more tax revenue. So these are things that, you know, hotel accommodations, restaurants, other things like that. So we'll see different types of businesses cropping up here on this strip. Uh, once we define it as actual commercial, any of the commercial in that zone is now directed to be tourism focused. So you can have kind of these little different districts. And right now we're still on low density. 
But once we switch over to high density later on, you can have, you know, a big downtown area with a block of hotels or, or kind of scatter it and stagger it all over if you wanted to. But uh, in order to do that, you kind of have to uh, snake in and out with the, you know, with the brush around different blocks, maybe. Um, otherwise, you're just going to have, you know, whatever your district is, anything that's zoned commercial in that district is going to be a mixture of those buildings. Hopefully that will fill out uh, in a minute or two. It looks like we need more residential. So let's see if we can meet that real quick. Those of you that follow the Let's Play uh, most of you know that I have a, a three-year-old because you, you hear her from time to time. And today's definitely one of those days, but I've been trying so hard to uh, find a spot to record this. Um, you're you're just going to have to deal with it. So I'm pretty sure you might have heard some some screaming, some playing, some stomping somewhere in the video today. Apologies for that, but apparently it's not in the cards that it is not going to happen. So uh, real quick. Just thought about this, that we didn't have water down here. And again, we'll just connect that for redundancy and may as well. Oh, little tiny little bit off there, huh? Well, just in case. We've certainly got money for an extra pipe at this point. Oh, we could probably put some down here since they're complaining. So let's do that. We'll take a quick scan through. Um, I'll keep an eye out eventually as commercial demand grows and there's no other place for businesses to move in. In fact, we might be getting very close to that right now. I don't think there's, well, there's a couple of abandoned buildings, but that should, I was going to say that should fill in next. And there we go. Now you see, I mean, you've got eateries and bookstores and all sorts of other stuff. In fact, some of them repeat way too often, unfortunately. Um, but even though this is uh, low density, you still get this, this dramatic shift in the size of buildings. So when you're ready to create that big downtown area, um, you can kind of ramp things up. And we'll talk about more how to do that in, in a later episode once we have all the different tools and districts and zones unlocked. But you can see just stamping something down like tourism, now we've got the uh the grant canyon casino and the hotel what the hotel and uh what is this one what is this one does it say it's a hotel okay this is a hotel and this is a hotel so basically they're hotels and and a comedy club what is this coffee roasters okay so that kind of gives you an idea how dramatically you can shift things even before you get to high density zoning. Um, makes a big difference and really is an impact on the skyline. Let's take a look from over here. You know, so be careful how much you use that uh, because of the noise, because of the traffic, because of the height. Uh, depending on the city you want to build, maybe you have a very tourist focused uh, city uh, and then that would be perfect. But you know what? In in retrospect, we probably don't need an entire block of that. So, whoops, let's do that, and let's remove that because that's certainly certainly enough for now. Have a couple hotels down here on this main strip. We've got to meet a little bit more industrial demand, I think, to grow us to seventy five hundred. But when we get there. That's one of the things that we'll be able to switch up on industrial demand is start using office zone instead. But we'll talk about that when we get there. Getting ahead of myself again, there's two things that I want to do. One of them is a policy review just to see what we've unlocked because we did unlock a bunch of things there. Uh, there's also one building that I want to drop in right here, Skate Park. For those of you that don't know, I created this channel back in 2010 to post a Skate 3 video. So. I figured I'd drop that in. Man, it's a little lumpy. We'll fix that later. But uh, but there we go. The the thing that started this channel was the Skate 3 video in 2010. Didn't upload anything for five years. Then I did a bunch of follow-up content. Uh, and then I discovered uh, City Skylines. And I'm glad that I did. And I'm glad you found the channel as well. So anyways, back to it. Let's jump in. Sorry for the, uh, the distraction there. That's another regular occurrence on the channel. Uh, we've unlocked some more policies. And... And every time that you kind of come in here, 
you know, look at what's not turned on and consider it. Um, but you'll notice some of them are still kind of grayed out. So we don't have to worry about all of them just yet. Uh, but we did get a couple interesting ones on the city planning tab. Um, and these are actually all super, super helpful for managing traffic. So heavy traffic ban, encourage biking, ban on sidewalks, NIMBY, and Old Town. Now you can do any of these policies citywide. Um, that kind of would break uh, some of this though. So you gotta be careful what you're applying where. And the thing to keep in mind, like I mentioned before, like we did with this little district over here, is anytime you paint a district, you can do district specializations, what kind of industry, what kind of commercial, what kind of residential, and so on. Later on when we unlock office, what kind of office. But having a district lets us interact with it and define policies for just that district. And some of these are gonna be especially valuable for that purpose. Now, eventually we're gonna get all this connected and I, I'll, I'll do this real quick just to prove a point. So let's freeform a road. Whoops, or let's draw a straight road and delete a couple houses. Um, let's do this. Let's kind of hook this in like that. Clean up that little extra bit of zoning that kind of snuck by there. So right now you can see right away, we've got a truck heading up that way and a truck heading this way. So right away they're seeing that as a route and saying, hey, I, that's, a, that's a quicker way for me as a commercial business maybe to get from here to do a delivery over here. And, uh, if we don't want that, if we don't want people cutting through something like a residential area, we can paint a district, go into policies and then do something specific for that district. So if we want to keep traffic in this residential neighborhood to only the residential neighborhood, basically, if you live here and are going to work, you can drive. If you uh, are coming from work and coming home, you can drive. But anybody else, maybe we want to keep out. So if we inspect this new district that we've just created, notice how I've uh, drawn around the roads here. I don't want to affect commercial areas with the trick that I'm about to do here because they need trucks and, and, and they need stuff coming in. Uh, but there's a couple things that we can do to help out and make sure that the uh, the residential neighborhoods stay a little bit more quiet. If we go into policies and again over to city planning, what we can do is we can say something like heavy traffic ban. Heavy traffic ban makes it so that no heavy transport vehicles are allowed in those roads. It does not, however, affect highways. So if you're overlapping over a highway, it's not going to change anything there. That can be really useful if you just want to keep heavy traffic out of an area. So if we don't want to see trucks cutting through Mulberry Heights, then that will stop that behavior. Now, if we want to stop everybody that doesn't live there from cutting through, that's what Old Town's for. And I wish I knew about this one earlier on in my playthrough, but it's super, super useful. So when you stamp down Old Town, you're seeing only residents and businesses can use that area for motor vehicle traffic. So let's stamp down Old Town on this and you get that little car with a slash through it. We'll come up here to Lilac Heights, city planning, and we'll do the same thing. So now let's consider the, the journey of a car. Notice this is getting a little bad over here. We'll troubleshoot this in just a second because um, that should not be happening, but we're doing way too much lane pinching here. Uh, let's see actually if this, if this was just me being cute and clever and too fancy. And if we just upgrade this all to three lanes, if it solves the problem, it might, it might very well. They're not going to use those other lanes as much, but it might get traffic flowing. Maybe we'll come back to it. We'll see. There's a lot of traffic happening over here. We're going to do another highway exit at some point over this way and force our industrial traffic over there. But we're also just starting to unlock some of those policies that can make a big difference. So again, if we look at our districts, We've got the old town over here, old town over there. Let's consider a journey uh, and let, let's take a journey. So if we throw it in the cinematic camera, hit the, um, I don't know, the back button. I still call it select uh, or the big the big button on PlayStation, the, whatever that huge button is, um, that one. So hit that and that'll get you into this free camera mode. Now hold Y or triangle and go into cinematic camera right? You can kind of fly around, get these, you know, preset views of the city. It'll follow different roads, things like that. Uh, you can also go into walk and walk around your city, various uh, different character models. You can hit left or right on the D pad to change them. 
So you've got the, whoa, hey, we've got those options. And then you also have the ability to drive. So you can highlight, click on the road, and you can actually go in uh, left and right triggers will kind of zoom in, zoom out if you want to go into to first person. And then A or X to go, X or square to stop. Uh, and uh, <laughs> all right, we're off off to a terrific start. These these are actually really uh, really top heavy apparently. So I I flipped a car uh, and knocked the sign over. Let's try again. Uh, there we go, car. Try not to get going too fast because these things do not handle well. This is not this is not a driving game, but it is kind of fun to kind of see your city from this perspective once in a while. Now, if I'm driving into the zone, this is all totally fine. Old Town. I live here, I work here, you know, this is where I go. Now, if I wanted to say, go visit somebody or go to a business that was down here, I would park my car right here and get out and walk because it's not an option anymore. Um, Old Town says, hey, if you don't live here, you aren't working here, you can't drive through it, you can't drive to it. You basically, you can't come into that district. So you may actually see that behavior if we throw this on three times speed for a minute. City service vehicles are not affected. And the people that are turning in here, like that one right there, just got out and walked. They actually might have had a justification for parking there. Anyways, you'll see it reduce traffic. That's the point. And some of those policies that we just unlocked are so, so huge for that. But things like heavy traffic ban, uh, Old Town, and NIMBY, or not in my backyard, um, should all be applied kind of at the district level. If you want to ban bikes on sidewalks across your city, that's fine. Um, definitely consider encourage biking citywide because that will get some people off the roads as well. One of the um, roads that we unlocked is two lane roads with bike paths. Now they have, I don't know, the drawback. It's not necessarily a drawback, but this street looks very lived on. You know, there's cars parked there people moving around um, these two lane roads you know they all they have that default parking lane if we go into the roads tool and upgrade these we get rid of the parking lane but now there's a dedicated bike lane and you can see right as soon as the parking lane ends the bike lane begins you can't park there but you can drive uh, your bike there uh, sims will ride their bike on the sidewalk just fine um, in fact, is that, no, nope, that's not one. It's just a pedestrian moving really fast. Um, they'll ride their bike on the sidewalk just fine. But, uh, if you have banned bike on sidewalk, they won't use the bike unless there's a bike lane. Uh, and that can be detrimental. You want, you want some people moving around on bikes again, less cars, the better, but for the time being and for aesthetics, I'm going to upgrade that back and eventually cars will park there again. But that was kind of a long rambling episode. We talked about a ton of stuff. Um, if there's things that I missed, things that I glossed over that you'd like me to focus on in another episode, like all those things I just sped by, um, let me know in the comments down below. In the next episode, though, we're we're very close and we're going to start talking about higher density areas because we're unlocking high density residential, commercial and office zones. And if you've got the Green Cities DLC, there's also the IT cluster specialization you don't have any of the DLC, there's the leisure specialization though. And very much like we saw with the tourism, same sort of effect, lots of noise. That one's 24-7, um, can bring some people in, but can also drive residents that live too close crazy. So be careful where you put things like that. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. We'll be covering a lot more as well as all the DLCs, each in their own individual episodes coming up. So stay tuned to the channel for that. If you're not subscribed already, now's the time to do so and consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. Join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. Until the next one, when we'll focus on high-density downtowns and big city building, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.